Welcome back to the Houston Oilers franchise. The Oilers are on a tear. Five straight wins. And we are on a hot train to the playoffs with about four games remaining. We sit here right now ahead of the Kansas City Chiefs, who are 7-6. and six. Just for reference, earlier in the year, we defeated the Chiefs. We play them one more time, the second to last game of the season. That's going to be a really good one. But what has been proven over the last few weeks is that we are really predicated off of our run game. The quarterback, I'm not sure how much the quarterback has really been an impact this season because Antonio Gibson has carried us. We've played both Deion Branson and Carter and have gotten wins. And then to add to that, we still have Philip Waters, who was a fourth round selection back in season one's draft. So now we take on the seven and six Houston Texans who are doing very, very well under C.J. Stroud this year. Obviously, they are only one game over 500, but that's not indicative of the type of season they are having because, remember, they had the number two overall pick for a reason, and now they have rebuilt this team to a winning culture, and they have a lot of players that they have added, added like Mike Williams, like uh, defensive players like uh, Max Crosby, like Doug Bass, who was one of their top draft picks this year, and he looks like the real deal at defensive tackle. He looks amazing. His dev trait should be revealed soon. I took a peek at it, and it was only a star, though, so he's not a superstar or an X-Factor. But coming into today's game, we are missing Dave Washington, who is our captain on defense. He got hurt with turf toe in practice, so he will be missing from the squad today. But we have a pretty good linebacker next to him in Devin Bush, so I'm not truly worried about it. And then Nick Woods can also slot over and be a middle linebacker as well. Speaking of the two, both of them have an upgrade before the start of this game. Devin Bush has turned into one of the best linebackers in the game, and it's been a quiet best linebacker in the game as well. Like He is not making these huge plays, but he's stopping you know these plays from getting turning into like long runs and uh, stopping these tight ends from getting open. I mean, he is all over the place. Then there's Nick Woods, who, like I said, can slot over into middle linebacker as a rookie, number six overall pick, and he has some super superstar abilities unlocked. But the big story of this game is Keon Carter, who was hurt last episode or two episodes ago, returns from injury. So here we go. The Battle of Houston is underway as we are, I guess, technically on the road, but at home at the same time. So this should be interesting. We face C.J. Stroud having his best career year so far with his best TD to interception ratio. So here's the first run of the game. That is Damian Pierce still the running back for the Texans. He starts out this game with a run of three yards. So second and seven now. It looks like they're running a man in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Pierce again. He hits the hole, breaks a tackle, and picks up a gain of eight. One thing I do want to see out of this game is some help next to Barmore stopping the run. I really want to see Terrell Harvin do great. He hasn't been doing that well as of late, but here is Stroud under pressure on a second and ten, and there is Barmore forcing Stroud out of the pocket, and he is just having an excellent season, probably the best season we've seen from him so far in this series. Third and 10 now. Stroud trying to get away. Von Cross was there. A throw to the sideline is incomplete. Sidney Brown there on the coverage. And probably the rookie Von Cross out of Georgia forced that throw away. So here comes the return of Keon Carter at quarterback. 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. I would define this season as a pretty standard rookie season for the first-year pro out of Tennessee. So here's Antonio Gibson getting the first carry, going for a gain of two. He has been the bell cow so far this year. Second and eight, play action fake throw to a wide open Irv Smith on the sideline, picking up a gain of seven for the first completion. Now third and one, handoff. Gibson tries to find the space in good contain, and Gibson will be shaken up on that play. He will go down, but it will be a three and out here for the offense. But Coach Eddie George decides to go for it on the fourth and one. It's Willie Wynn Jr., and he does fight for the first down on that play. But we get some immediately bad news after that. A broken collarbone 
for Antonio Gibson. And that will surely sideline him for an extended period of time. And we are in trouble right after that as Jamie Collins gets in there for the sack. Loss of 10. It's now a second and 20 right now. Here's Irv Smith catching that one, breaking a tackle, and he does get a lot of that back for a third and eight. Across the 50. Here's a throw across the middle. Wow, right to the safety, and he can't hold on. That was a terrible throw. So here come the Texans back on offense now as we punt the ball away officially. Here's a handoff to the outside. Damian Pierce throwing a stiff arm, but eventually being taken down by Micah Hyde. It's now third and two. Once again, Pierce tackled in the backfield. It's Barmore. Yeah, man, I can't say en enough good things about this guy. He is just a game wrecker, and he forces the punt. Here we go at our own 30. Trey Battle's going to have to take over some running back duties as he jukes inside, picking up a gain of seven. Trey Battle is an undrafted rookie as he has 99 speed, converted over from receiver to running back, and here he gets the screen pass and fights back inside. Enough for the first down. The one thing I worry about with Trey Battle is that he is fumble prone. As here's Willie Wayne Jr. who checks in. He's undrafted as well. Here's a throw out to the left side, and it is Marvin Mims who has enough for the first down. We're officially across the 50. Battle now in the slot. Here's a throw back to him. He's wide open. He's got space in the third straight third down of the drive as he gets to the 31. We had to kind of run a different offense without Antonio Gibson. We can't run the ball as well, but here is Willie Wayne Jr. Off the bench, he picks up a big gain of 20 all the way to the 11, and now we have a fresh set of downs again. Going right back to him, here is a run up the middle. Pretty solid. That's a gain of six for the young running back, and now we get it to the two eventually. It's third and two. Play action fake, throw into battle, trying to fight for the... Uh, pylon and he cannot get there it's a big time hit and now we're stuck at the two it's fourth and one we're going to go for it here Carter runs battle in motion we give it to him battle trying to get to the outside and he can't get to the end zone but there's a flag on the play but it's just going to be holding so the goal line stand remains here for the Texans but they start the next drive at the one. They try a stretch play to the left side. It's Damian Pierce who tries to get it to the outside. It's a safety. It looks like Rutherford was there for the tackle, and that was good contained by him. Barmore was also screaming right behind Pierce. What's new? It's two to nothing. Here is Carter throwing to left side, and he's got Quincy Hall, the rookie. Top three right now in AFC Rookie of the Year voting. And he has his second catch of the day for the first down. So here's a handoff. This time it's battle again. And he picks up five. And now we're across the 50 at the 43. That was Max Crosby on the tackle. He has zero sacks this year, by the way. Here's a throw to the sideline. It's Irv Smith who can't hold on. I don't know what happened on that play, but he was wide open and nobody was near him. Third and five. Carter rolls, throws on the run. He's got Mims and he cannot hit him. It falls to the ground, and we're in four down territory again. It's fourth and five. We'll see if we can, we can convert this time. Here's a short throw. It's Irv Smith, and he holds on to it for the first down. This drive continues. At the 35 now, Carter doing a good job throwing the ball short. He now is under pressure. He throws across the middle, and it's dropped again. It's Trey Battle this time, and he surely would have ran for a first down or more. But instead, we bring in the field goal unit to make it a 5-0 game. So here's Stroud back on offense. Here's a throw across the middle. That's going to be caught for a first down right there to Neat. Oh, actually, that's Tank Dell. He gets a gain of 20, guarded by Casey Burton. So first and 10 again, a quick throw, and Stroud will have it to Mike Williams this time for a gain of six. At the 42 now. It's a third and one, about four minutes to go here in the first half. Here is Stroud again, a quick throw. It's Tank Dell again, and he finds the soft zone and falls forward for the first down. 
They're inside field goal range now. Damian Pierce with his longest run of the day. He hits the hole hard and picks up a gain of 10, 8 for 25. We've been able to bottle him up so far, but now they're inside the red zone. Here's a quick throw. It's Tank Dell again, and he gets to the 14, 6 of 8 for C.J. Stroud today. They spread us out wide here, five wide receiver set. Stroud throws to the end zone, and he's got Dalton Schultz for the touchdown. And the Texans will score the first touchdown of the day, and they will take the lead. So here we go back on offense, a play action fake now. Carter throws on the run. He's got Quincy Hall, who can't hold on. That's three drops I count, and they each would have been big first downs. It's second and ten. Carter throws quickly back to Irv Smith this time, and it's a first down. And now we hurry it up here before the two-minute warning, trying to get a couple of plays off here. Carter in the pocket, throws deep. He's got Trey Battle, and he's got him! And Trey Battle will not be brought down. Touchdown! How about that throw from Keon Carter? And that's a whole lot of speed we got from Battle out of the backfield. It is 12 to 7. So here's a quick throw now. Oh, and Devin Bush absolutely lights up Tank Dell. I have no idea how he held on to that one. Second and six now. Another quick throw back to his favorite target so far. It's Dell again. A minute 20 to go. Another quick throw. And I don't even need to say who. It's Tank Dell. Three straight catches for Dell. Another throw. It's Dalton Schultz now. And they are moving the ball. It's actually Edison who is one of their superstar players. Here's a throw out of the wheel route. Back to Dell, but it's knocked down this time. Casey Burton. Two-minute drill continues. A handoff this time, and it's to their backup running back. That's going to be Cooks as he gets to about the 22. 37 seconds. A quick throw. It's Dalton Schultz inside the 10. We cannot stop the offense on this two-minute drill. And now they hurry it up to the line. 20 seconds to go at the 8. Here is Stroud dropping back. He throws to the end zone. It's intercepted. Devin Bush with the interception. No Dave Washington. No problem. Devin Bush with his second pick of the season. And he halts this drive before halftime. C.J. Stroud a little bit too greedy. And it results in a turnover. And we have the lead going into halftime 12-7. So here we go to start the second half. We start out with the football. So if we can drive down the field, we will have a two-score lead. Here is Battle taking it back, and he fumbles it. And the Texans recover. This has been the issue with Trey Battle. We're probably going to have to take him off a kick return. This is the second or third fumble this year already. So here is Houston now. The Houston Texans, that is. A toss play to start the next drive, and that is a gain of two. Flag on the play, and it's going to be holding on the offense. I was afraid that was going to be a face mask, but now the offense is backed up to about the 30. It's now third and 15. Here is Stroud throwing across the middle, and he's got Tank Dell again. Tank Dell is killing us today. Seven for 81 for the young receiver. It's a first down. At the 10 now, here is Stroud in the pocket, still buying time, throwing this one out of the back of the end zone. Last time he threw a pick inside the red zone, and now it's third and goal. Here is Stroud again, trying to get away. He's hit hard, and Barmore gets to him. It's a sack for Barmore, and he absolutely lights up C.J. Stroud, and they're all the way back at the 31. They do kick the field goal from 48 yards out. It is good. But what a hit by Christian Barmore. What else can you say about Barmore here in this series? Here's a big run. Trey Battle got to hold the ball, though. He does. He picks up the first down on this play. So now at the 48-yard line here, Carter in the pocket, throws to the sideline, incomplete. He may have had Quincy Hall open there in the second level. He decided not to go that route. Here's a quick throw back to Callum McDermott on a third and 10, and he can't hang on. 
There's just been too many drops today. That one wouldn't have been a first down, but it would have set up a fourth and short. And here is the offense back on the field for the Texans, and Nick Woods is here. He makes a play behind the line for his first tackle of the day. Once again, another handoff. Damian Pierce barely escapes there in the backfield, but does turn it into positive yardage. He picks up about a gain of two or three, maybe. And now it's third and eight. Uh-oh, Plash of Fake Stroud's in trouble, and he gets hit by Nick Woods. Barmore was there again. What a game he's having and Woods almost got the credit for that sack. It's incomplete. So short field on this next drive. Here's a throw to Irv Smith, and that's going to be a catch in the first down. 13 of 26 here for Carter. A lot of these have been drops, though. It's running a man in motion. This is going to be Marvin Mims. They give it to him, and he finds some open space. Cuts up field for a gain of seven. I like to get Marvin Mims going there with those jet sweeps if I'm not getting him the ball more. But here's a throw across the middle. That's caught. Back to Marvin Mims. I cannot let the game go by without getting him involved. And it's a first and goal. Here is Phillip Waters in the game now. It's going to be a read option, but he throws it. It's an interception. What? You've got to be kidding me. And Phillip Waters came in the game to run a read option right there. But instead, the play caller switched it at the last second to a pass and throws an interception. Devastating end to that drive right there. Here is C.J. Stroud now after the turnover. He takes it on a read option. Well, probably should have been ran. And he picks up a gain of 11. It's now a third and eight at the 42. Here is Stroud. He steps back in the pocket. Throws deep, unwinds for Micah Hyde and Mike Williams, and this one is knocked away. A little nervous on that one. Mike Williams over Micah Hyde. It probably was a jump ball situation, but a little bit overthrown. So here is Carter now back on the field, trying to get his team down the field, and there's a nice, drop, nice start to the drive. It's going to be Marvin Mims for the first down. Into the fourth quarter now. Trey Battle, play action fake. Here's Carter in the pocket, throwing across the middle, and he doesn't get enough air on it. It's intercepted right to Cameron Bynum. The one thing about this throw is that we saw Bynum's back turn, and all of a sudden he just turns around right away and catches it. I couldn't believe that when I threw this ball because I thought that Bynum would be following Mims. Like, you see, he turns all the way around, and suddenly he knows the ball's in the air. That's just Madden, I guess. So here we go, first and 10 now, just outside the red zone. Damian Pierce with the carry, and he loses a yard on that one. Second and 11, this low-scoring affair will get more interesting with the sack by Devin Bush. What a game he's having today, an interception and a sack right there, and it's now third and long. At the 42 now, it looks like the defense is changing the play, and Stroud's under pressure, and he goes down. It's Von Cross, the rookie out of Georgia, and he has been heating up the last few games, and we still have the two-point lead and possession. So here is Trey Battle now getting to the outside, trying to use that speed, and he picks up a gain of eight. At the 25 now, not even 100 yards rushing here for the Oilers, but here's a big run. Trey Battle off to the races. 99 speed, but Derek Stingley has the angle and eventually runs him down. That is some game-breaking speed right there, and it happens at least once a game. It's just somebody, whoever's number is called. So here's Carter now throwing to left side, and that's a big miss. He was looking for Irv Smith, and he could not hit him. Irv Smith would have walked in right there. Willie Wayne Jr. with the carry, now in a second and 10. And he picks up a gain of six. At the seven now, a big third and four. Here, running the receiver in motion, Carter. Uh-oh, look at Max Crosby get in the backfield. And Carter has to throw this one away. And Crosby absolutely ruined that play right there because instead of getting six, we have to settle for three. That's a big time stop by the Texans defense. So here we go, back on D. Here's a quick throw to left side. That one's caught. It's Mike Williams guarded by Alani Rutherford, and he's just short of the first down marker. 
Third and one, another quick throw. Once again to Williams, beating Rutherford, but he's going to be shaken up on that play. So here we go at the 34-yard line now. Here is Stroud. A quick throw. It's Damian Pierce, but that is a good tackle by Casey Burton. A loss of four yards on that play, backing him up to the 30. The three-minute mark just hit now. It's second and 14. Here's a throw. And, oh, my goodness, Barmore almost had the interception, and he can't hang on. And now it is third and 14. Back at their 30. Here's a quick throw. Incomplete. I'm not sure who that one was to, but Stroud got rid of it, and they will punt this one back to our offense. So one long drive could end this game now. Here is Carter. Screen pass out to battle. Battle weaving his way for a first down, but we do have to be careful with battle because they're going to be trying to punch that ball away from him. So now at the 50, just at the two-minute warning, here is battle again fighting forward. And they will give him that first down on that one. We bring in J. Ron McAllister. He's more secure with the football. He picks up a gain of four. And now Houston's starting to burn those timeouts. Second and six. Stretch play to the left side. McAllister can't fight off the tackle. And now it's third and five. Carter now at the 40. A first down could win this game. He moves to the right side. He doesn't have the speed to get there, so he throws this one deep, and that one is overshot. Looking for Jesse Fisher Jr. in the back of the end zone. That level of difficulty was high. And we will actually come out for the field goal here, a 57-yarder, but we decide against it because if we miss that field goal, they will get the ball close to the 50 with a short field position. But instead, we go for the win. Fourth and five. Carter throws across the middle. He had Willie Wayne Jr. open, and he can't hit him. That's a bad miss by a rookie quarterback, and he gives the Texans a chance here with a minute 30 to go. No timeouts remaining here for the Texans. There is a quick throw. C.J. Stroud finds his young receiver for a gain of seven. Now a second and three. Stroud in the pocket, throwing. It's Damian Pierce out of the backfield. He cuts forward and gets down quickly. It's enough for the first down. Just past the one-minute mark here, remaining in the game. Stroud running Pierce in motion. They're using a lot of time to call that play right there. Stroud throws on the run, and he's got a wide open Dalton Schultz. He gets tackled at about the 16. And C.J. Stroud hurries it up to the line. He's not going to spike it here. Stroud in the pocket. He throws this one away, wisely stopping the clock. It's now third and 10 at the 16. Another throw out of bounds. And now it's fourth and 10. This is for the game at the 16-yard line. Here is Stroud, three-by-one formation. Play action fake. Stroud throws to the end zone. This one's caught. Mike Williams for the touchdown. C.J. Stroud all day has been throwing these accurate balls and it hasn't amounted to any touchdowns, and he finally gets it to Williams. What a throw by Stroud over the top of a linebacker in front of the safety, and the Texans take the lead. 10 seconds to go. They have to go for two to make it at least a three-point game. And wide open is Hutchinson, and it's a three-point game. So here are the Oilers now with 10 seconds. We have two timeouts remaining. We'll see what Carter can do. Here he is throwing from the pocket, and he misses Jesse Fisher Jr., and that's a bad miss because Jesse Fisher could have turned up field right there and probably got into field goal range. Instead, now five seconds remaining at the 25. Carter tries to load up, hit by Max Crosby, and that will be the ball game. The Texans will end the Oilers' win streak at five, and this is a bad loss because both teams were jockeying for playoff position, and the Texans might replace the Oilers in those standings now. Wow. What a game, a very low scoring affair, a defensive effort. But when Antonio Gibson left the game, 
our game plan kind of changed. We couldn't run the ball as effectively, and really, our receivers were off today. We had a ton of drops, and I don't know if it was just a fluke thing. They listed four drops here. I counted way more than four. Pretty much all those four were all first downs, to be honest with you, but there were some missed throws as well. I think Carter missed that big-time throw there at the end to Jesse Fisher Jr., but that was like one of the throws that he was missing all game, like the deep crossers. He couldn't hit those at all, and I don't know what it was, but it was just an off game from the beginning. Was it the jitters of playing in Houston? I'm not sure. But the worst news of this loss is that we lose Gibson for the rest of the year. A broken collarbone puts him out six weeks. That will pretty much put him out if we made the playoffs up until the AFC Championship game, if we made it that far. So his season is done. We're placing him on IR, and I'm not sure if we place him on IR if he can return. In real life, you can, but I don't know about in Madden. I, I don't know if Madden has that fixed, but you can just look at the results of when he's in versus when he's actually on. When he's over 100 yards, we are 5-0. and When he's not, we are like 2-4. and So it is that big of a deal that he is out. Trey Battle will have to assume the role of running back now. But obviously the big worry is that he's fumbled a whole lot. He has two rushing fumbles from the running back position. And returning kicks, he has two or three. I think he has three. He doesn't keep that statistic, but it's a lot. So we're going to have to lean on Keon Carter. I mean, Carter's going to have to be better now. No more game managing. He's going to have to go out there and win us games. We still will use Deion Branson in packages. I think that's pretty much the plan. But he's not going to be the starter. It's going to be Keon Carter. I think he just gives us the best chance to win. And I think maybe the quarterback that does give us maybe a little bit of a different look than Carter and Deion Branson is Waters. He's the perfect blend of the two but we've seen what waters looks like so i'm not even sure we'll go that route so we are eight and six a couple of games left here in the season and time is running out and with three games left we are fighting for that six or seven seed we have the commanders chiefs and broncos all coming up and it seems like they're all must wins so this ending to this season is going to be an exciting one to see if we can fight here without our best player, Antonio Gibson. So that's going to do it here for this episode. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money, I got time to get it Target on me, so my car's a tenant Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it Bible in a dash and the stick is with it And I hit the 4-5 on the wet side but I'm from the east side, this how we slide, this how we ride, yeah, yeah, this how we ride.